Now, good morning. So we're going to deal now very briefly with this idea of how it is possible to move through the book in different ways, at different levels, depending on the needs of the audience. And we found that the most popular and the most common use of the book is to handle it with just three major themes. This is an introductory walk through the material. It starts out with what is it that has caused our vision to be threatened? What is it that makes it difficult for us to imagine a future for ourselves when we're at midlife or approaching retirement, or for our teams, or for our organizations? And what has happened to our ability to imagine, to our visioning capabilities, is dealt with in a chapter of the book. And it describes a number of ways in which things have been dampened down by us, by marketing, by pressures, by financial pressures, or whatever. And these points that are made in there are not by any means the essence of the book. The book is more about what to do about the problem. But we do need to mention what the problem is, and we've done that in that chapter. Where we start to get interesting, of course, is, is there a model? We need, I certainly am one of the people who needs a model for change. I've, a number of other people have said they do too. But there is a model for change that we use in the book that actually goes back probably 4,000 years. It goes back to some ancient sources in India. And I believe this is the model that Abraham Maslow used for his hierarchy of needs. And good for him, he tried his best to strip it down to make it accessible for people. We all try and make stuff accessible for people. But the problem is that I think Maslow, yeah, absolutely, I think he overshot. That's the point. Thank you, yes. And the overshooting that he did was to make it too simple. He missed out the crucial point of transition in the model, in the heart of the model, which is literally the heart of the issue for when you get to that section. And uh, that's where it's literally true, literally true, thanks Susan, that this is the heart of the issue, a point of transition. And then having dealt with the model briefly, I think what's also important is, okay, so how has this been applied by other people? So there are guides that I list, plus examples of people doing it successfully from movies, etc. The two guides that appear in the introductory version are Caesar Milan and Jill Balti Taylor, two incredibly successful, uh, effective people who are modeling the changes that we're talking about. So that's the first part of the model. And we would then say the introductory part of the book takes these three steps, and that's your intro version through the material. Like that. Thanks very much.